Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Whenever a military transport aircraft sets out on a mission, it usually carries a wide range of cargo and troops. Depending on the mission specifics, this can include heavy artillery and vehicles. such as the massive M1 Abram tanks. It can also include palletized cargo, Humvees, and even boats. You might wonder, how does the US military handle the complexities associated with the logistics involved with the safe loading, transport, and unloading of these aerial cargoes. These are carried out by specially trained crew members who supervise cargo handling. Known as the loadmasters, their job starts with accurate pre-planning of the correct placement of cargo on the plane based on its load and fragility. They apply scientific and mathematical principles to load aircraft properly and are vastly experienced in operating the Loadmaster software. They work closely with pilots and other crew members to ensure everything is in the right place at the right time. Loading an aircraft is actually an exact science. And the loadmaster is responsible for ensuring the plane is correctly packed to ascertain the safety of everyone on board. The loadmasters must be able to develop a number of skills. They must be able to assess situations quickly and effectively as they arise. They need to have strong communication skills. And they are the point of contact between the flight crew and the ground personnel. Apart from handling loads, they also monitor weather conditions several feet above the clouds and communicate with the pilots regarding potential hazards. Loadmaster's jobs are versatile, and they can work with both civilian and military transport aircraft that need safe cargo handling. Under your head, somebody tries to come at you with a knife, um, and also how to take a rifle away from somebody. There is ample training required for a loadmaster to be proficient. And one of these includes the service tail trainer exercise. In this exercise, the student loadmasters are tasked with loading and unloading operations. In addition, they are taught the skills of cargo restraint calculations, the proper use of checklists, and passenger relations. A critical part of the training is when the loadmasters are made to weigh the vehicles at the aerial port. then load them onto the aircraft on the flight line. They do all of these while ensuring proper weight distribution for flight. The loadmasters are trained on different vehicle sizes to provide an environment that mirrors their potential daily experience.
They are made to configure different sized cargo. Maximize the load and wood shoring. And build effective support to load or unload cargo onto aircraft. Another type of training needed to become a loadmaster is offload training. As usual, there is a pre-planned calculation of the offloading process. Afterward, they ensure the checklists are correct before offloading the cargo. The cargo offload must be accurate and according to plan. And the team must work together in unison to have a successful task. As part of their technical training to become proficient loadmasters for the military, they are trained on loading the Humvees onto an Air Force C-17 Globemaster III cargo aircraft. The Humvee is a versatile four-wheeled military vehicle that can carry a wide variety of military hardware. To do this, they pre-calculate the Humvee's weight and how to best use the tight spaces on the C-17. In addition, they are trained on the effective ways of securing the vehicles in place by chaining them to several attachment points. Whether the transport aircraft used is the C-17 or the C-130 Hercules, the process of loading and airdropping is the same. The only difference is that the C-17 is bigger than the C-130 cargo aircraft. The loadmasters have a huge task on their hands, especially when it's time to airdrop these vehicles. This is because they must ensure the safety of the troops and the vehicles. Hence, they are also trained in the airdropping process, which consists of various activities. At the drop destination, the pilots ensure that the C-130 drops the cargo at an airspeed of around 140 knots. while flying at least 750 feet above ground level. As soon as the navigator gives the green light to drop the cargo, the loadmaster releases the drogue to pull out the large extraction chute. The drag on the extraction chute unlocks the cargo from the aircraft's cargo rails and pulls it out of the C-130. To further improve the skills of the loadmaster, they are also trained in the techniques of providing airlift and airdrop support for the U.S. Army. For instance, the U.S. Army conducted an Arctic Anvil exercise at the Camp Shelby Joint Forces Training Center in Mississippi. The training lasted through the whole month of October 2019. The exercise is a multinational force-on-force -force training that involves dropping cargo and equipment from a moving C-130 in the air. The loadmasters are drilled on the importance of this operation and its importance to the overall success of the mission.
They are made to know that driving a supply truck to an austere location on the battlefield is not an option. This is because it endangers the ground forces and their equipment. Hence, the airdrop operation is a way to ensure the ground troops never run out of supplies without compromising their safety. Far from dropping only supplies and equipment, the C-130 can also be used for the rapid insertion of troops onto the battlefield. Known as the paratroopers, these special force members are trained to be dropped by parachute from an airplane into enemy territory. They are always ready and are trained to deploy on short notice. The U.S. Army usually conducts Arctic Airborne Operation training to simulate a forcible entry operation to seize an airfield. This exercise is used to test the ability of the paratroopers to face a near-peer threat similar to what is expected on the battlefield. This is especially important in austere and cold areas, such as the Arctic regions. Like a loadmaster for cargo drops, Jump masters play an active role in dropping the paratroopers to the drop zone. They come up with the logistics and the procedures for an effective dropping exercise, since they are responsible for the safety of cargo and troops. The paratroopers would strap themselves with all the equipment and gear required for the mission. Following that, they form a queue at the request of the jump master in order to perform the static line parachute jump from the moving C-130. At the drop zone, the pilot attains an adequate combination of airspeed and altitude before the paratroopers jump out of the plane one after the other. Aside from air dropping into the drop zone, the paratroopers are also drilled in casualty evaluation training during a swift response exercise. This training is considered essential, since casualty triage and evaluation are essential in preparing for a potential combat situation. The training encompasses the specific needs of the region. It includes having medical personnel deal with mock injuries, which are related to the paratroopers jumping into Arctic and subarctic conditions. Here, you can see a medical practitioner using a snowmobile to attend to a paratrooper that got injured while jumping into the region. Getting planes in the air safely with all their cargo and passengers is an important daily task in the Air Force. They might not be at the front line of the battle, but the loadmaster's responsibility remains integral to successfully coordinating cargo, supplies, and troops as the Army advances to the battlefield. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.